Aleluia.
Hallelujah. I need the Lord.
morning church let's take this hymn and i want you to sing it with your heart thank you we are singing it one more time
Strengthen us in this dark hour of the world. I want you to pray and ask the Lord to strengthen you in the dark hour of this world. Lord, I need your help. I need your grace, abiding grace. I need sufficient grace to go through this hour and come out as a champion. I want us to lift up our voice and ask the Lord that the Lord will help us to go through these seasons, these dark seasons of the world where people have been thrown into confusion. Ask the Lord to be your guide. Ask the Lord to be your help. Ask the Lord to strengthen you. Ask Him and say, Father, I want you to be my strength. I want you to be my guide. I want you to help me, O oh Lord. I want everybody to pray in church. There is no one in this church today that is not going through one thing or the other. Lord, I need sufficient grace to be able to go through. Lord, help me in the name of Jesus. I want you to lift up your voice as a church. Let's do this together. Lesus e preete plani mazuzeka. Malende pre ele makunta libra ni mazuza tontelia Evele me kunda suse fa akuntoliga Lord help me strengthen thou me in the name of Jesus Christ grant me that grace and the ability to be able to go through and then come out a victor The Bible say to him that overcomes Will I give access to partake of the tree of life? Lord, help me. I need your strength in this hour. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, I need your strength. I need your help. I need your saving hand. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's ask the Lord one more time. Father, speak to me today. Grant me understanding of your word. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, help me. Help me to function as a Christian. There is an unshakable life. There is an unshakable life. Lord, help me live this life in the face of every odd and tribulation. Can we lift up our voice? There is an unshakable life. Lord, help me to live this life by the helping hands of your grace. Thank you, precious Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. And let everybody shout a louder Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are welcome in the name of Jesus. I want to greet everyone. Um, thank you for coming to the house of God relentlessly. And I want to also say thank you to our pastor, assistant, and all the deacon, deaconesses, and the entire member. The Lord laid something strong in my mind today. And then I will teach that I'm also going to pray. But I want everybody to take note of today's teaching and let everybody go back to their home or to their different houses and pray this message into their spirit. The Lord spoke to me that we are going, the whole world is going through darkness and it will take the light of God to shine. It will take the grace of God to go through. And to those that their faith is not strong, this is the time to build up your faith. Remember Jude verse 3, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and to exalt you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the sin. So we need to understand this very, very important. The world is going through shakings and it has always been in the scripture. Let's read Hebrews chapter 12 
verse 26 to 28. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 26 to 28. I want us to see the word of God. And then I'm also going to pray. Hebrews chapter 12. Um, Hebrews 12. From verse 26 to 28. Let's read it. Um, Hebrews 12. 26 to 28. What does the word of God say? Whose voice then shook the earth. But now he had promised saying yet once more. I shake not the earth only but also heaven and this word yet once more signifying the removing of those things that are shaken as of the things that are made that those things which cannot be shaken may remain wherefore we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved let us have grace whereby we may serve god acceptably with reference and godly fear for our god is a consuming fire now this is the promise of God himself that he will no longer just shake the world uh, he will also shake the heaven so that when the things that are shakeable are taken away then things that cannot be shaken may remain I want you to tell yourself I will not be shaken I wanted to say it one because I say in the name of Jesus though the world may shake I will not be shaken. Say in the name of Jesus, whatever that happens to this world, I, Reverend Paul, I will not be shaken. There is an unshakable life. There is a life that cannot be shaken. And that is the life we are to live in Christ Jesus. We are to live a life that cannot be shaken, that cannot be taken away. When the things that are shaken are taken away, then the scripture says, the unshakable shall remain. Somebody say, I am unshakable. I shall remain. I am unshakable. I shall remain. One more time. I am unshakable. I shall remain. And uh, this is a very important scripture for uh, believers to hold so strong you are going to speak to yourself in this hour that i will not be shaken in the book of abacook chapter 3 verse 17 let's read abacook chapter 3 verse 17 i'm preaching the word of god and i want you to take serious important note give attention to this word because the word is going through darkness in abacook chapter 3 Verse 17. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vine, the labor of the olive shall fail, and the field shall eat no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no heart in the stores. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Verse 19 says, The Lord God is my strength, and He will make my feet like His feet, and He will make me to walk upon my high places. He will make me to walk upon my high places. I want you to say it one more time. I will not be shaken. Though the fig tree may not blossom, I will not be shaken. Though there may not be fruit on the vine, I will not be shaken. Though the labor of the olive may fail, and the, yield, the field may yield no food, though the flock may be cut off of the fold, and there be no heart in the stall, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. Let me firstly say this to you. You must guard your joy in this time. If the enemy is attacking you, he's going to attack your joy. Your joy is is going to play a strong role in this end time. The Bible talks about unspeakable joy that is full of glory, full of glory, full of strength. Don't let the enemy take joy out of you in this season. Whoever takes your joy will control your life. Whoever takes your joy will control your life. The Bible said the kingdom of God is righteousness 
and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Uh, that is the expressions of God's kingdom in a man. The kingdom of God that functions within your spirit. It functions as righteousness, as peace, and as joy in the Holy Spirit. So every time you are losing your peace, every time you are losing your joy, every time you are losing righteousness, the devil is putting strong attack upon your life. You must take your stand against unrighteousness, unholiness, and then you must maintain the joy of the Lord, and the Lord will help you. Now, having said that, I want us to also understand that when we talk about the unshakable, the unshakable life is the concept of life that is lived in the midst of many terrible events. But that person is not subject to shakings. In physics, there is something we call dynamics. When we talk about dynamics in physics, it is the motion of an object and the force by which the object moves. Dynamics is the motion. It is the motion of an object and the force by which that object is moving. That explains to you that the force by which your life moves from levels to faces is a force of God. And we call it a divine force. Somebody say in the name of Jesus, there is a force through which my life moves from one level to another. I say by this force, I will ascend from one realm to another. I will ascend from one level of glory to another. You need to understand this very important. So when we talk about dynamics, it is the movement or the motion of an object and the force by which the object is moving. What the devil is dealing with in your life as a believer is to deal, <clears throat> excuse me, is to stop the force through which you move in life. There is a divine force through which you move. There is a force through which you become unshakable. When the enemy contend with this force and they prevail over this force, then that simply means life becomes motionless. There is no movement of life any longer. I want to pray for you today that in the name of Jesus Christ, no devil will stop the force by which you move. There is a divine force that moves a man from one level to another. And every time this force is unstoppable in you, you also become Excuse me. Every time this force becomes unstoppable in you, you also becomes unstoppable. At any time the force of God is stopped in you, that is exactly when you also stop. So I want to tell you this day, don't let the force, the divine force by which you transcend, by which you ascend, by which you move from one realm, and one level to another. Don't let the devil stop the force of God in your life. The devil is going to do everything he can to put a stop to the force of God. But I want you to say to yourself this morning, church, say to yourself this morning, the, force, the divine force of God is unstoppable in me and the movement of God in my spirit no power of hell can stop it. I want you to say it very well. No power of hell can stop the force of God in my life. Have you ever had, have you ever read a scripture that says all things are working together for good to them that love God? Who are the call according to his purpose? Have you ever read a scripture that explains the the, the working together of all things, working together of all things. I want us to read Romans chapter 8. And um, somebody said, Reverend, uh, you are teaching us this morning. I need to do that. I have a responsibility to teach and to create awareness for you that there is a force of God in your life that the enemy must not stop. No matter what happens, 
don't let the enemy stop the force of God in your life. And the scripture says that we know and we know that all things work together for good to them that loved God. That is Romans chapter 8 verse 28. Romans 8 verse 28. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. The working together of things, the working together of things for your good is one of the greatest force that is with a man. Every good thing that functions in your life cannot function in isolation. Say it after me, nothing good functions in isolation. And what the enemy seek after is to make sure that things that God has designed to work together for your good, the enemy scatter them, disjoint them. You must not give room for the enemy to separate these forces of God that are working together for your good. Don't forget what I call dynamics. The dynamics is the motion of an object and the force by which the object moves. So if your life is going to accelerate and move, there are required forces that take you from one level of grace and glory to another. So you need to understand that there are many forces of God, there are divine forces of God that can move your life from one level to another. These divine forces are the forces the enemy target and then the enemy always wants to make sure that these forces are not working in your own favor. I want to firstly show you this and I think it's going to be of tremendous help to you. There are forces that move the life of a man forward when those forces are not manipulated. And that is one of the areas that will lead me to prayer with you today. We are going to take serious time to pray. And you are going to seek the face of God this morning. I'm going to show you some forces that contend with life. Forces that once those forces are not in the righteous mood, they can put a stop to the operations of God in your life. The first one is what I call the force of time. The force of time. The force of time. The force of time can stop a man, especially when time is manipulated. The force of time. That is the false force that uh, always God always wants to use time to process reality. God want to, always want to use time to process his intention. So the force of time is a force that uh, once it is manipulated, then it hinders a man. In John chapter 2, when the mother of Jesus told them that they had no wine, Jesus told his mother, he said, Woman, my hour has not yet come. That simply means I can do nothing if my time does not come. So the mother of Jesus looked at him and he told his disciples, once his time comes, whatever he tells you, do it. Once his time comes, whatever he tells you, do it. And then the moment the force of time came, Jesus was able to use the appointed time to change water to wine. I want to pray for you this morning and I want you to pray. As you sit down, I want you to cry to God that in the name of Jesus no power of the enemy can stop the force of time. Can you say it one more time? Say no power of the enemy can stop the force of time. The force of time in my life will not be twisted by the enemy. No power of hell will turn the tick of the clock anti-clockwise. The enemy is not going to set back the force of time. I want you to pray it very important because it's very important. Lord, 
the power, the force of time, the force of my time will not be taken over by the devil. Can you say it one more time? Say the force of my time cannot be taken over by the devil. No devil will twist the force, the force of time. Time is so much important in your life that time represents different measure and the expressions of reality. And you must pray Ma Anta Alia Basuzeketelia Malende Preete Prakatolia Mazuzata. This is where I want this meeting to be a, a bit warfare. Ve ele kundia paranda paro tatalia. Melua zaza pandi kuntelea le anduara pali mazuze. Lord, the enemy is not going to twist the force of time through which I move from one level to another in the name of Jesus. At any time the enemy twists the force of time, that is when they throw man into confusion. This year and in this month, Maandia Falikuntele Prani Mazasanto Liketea. The force of time will not be twisted. The devil is not going to handle the shadow of God's time in my life. That is why the Bible says you, you should redeem in the time because the days are evil. Time is a force. Time is a force by which a man moves. That is why I define dynamics as the motion of an object and the force by which the object moves. There is a force by which you move. There is a force by which you move. There is a force by which you move. It was the same force by which Jesus moved. Jesus said, my hour has not yet come. Do you know if that hour didn't come till today, Jesus won't be able to do anything. There are people the enemy has stopped their hour. There are people the enemy has stopped their hour. I want you to lay hands on your head. In the name of Jesus any force by which the time of my life is being stopped. In the name of Jesus, I unleash the power of God against every force that is twisting the force of time. Le epia na mazuza afalo kunteliaba walimi karata baronda anta plani mazuze ketelia. I want you to pray that prayer. I want to, to, to pray that prayer with all your heart. Please, church, pray that prayer. Le epli ma andua santalia melia kondaza paranti parapali mazuzelia. If you don't understand what I'm saying, just lay hands on your head and begin to declare, <coughs> Lord, ma andia paria. This is what some of us are going through. This is what some of us are facing. There is a force by which a man moves. One of the forces is the force of time. The Bible says, and the children of and the men of Isaac had the understanding of time. At any time you lose the understanding of time, that is the point your life remains in the same place. Lord, fight for me. Deal with forces. Deal with forces that is putting the force of time on hold. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. La Paliama Lezo Eketunte Leavane Makuntalia church open your mouth and declare there is a force through which your life is moving forward at any time the enemy is twisting these forces and that is the time you are standing still le kanduza malianta palia eranda popolige efli kadua rata papalimi eliamazo parontanta le kentu aratapa elia fakunte lepa le pepe le mezuze ke runti chihata paramazua in Jesus' precious name, we pray. In Jesus' name, we pray. I still want. I want you to stand up on your feet. We are going to pray this prayer one more time. Don't let the enemy handle the measure of time you need to function in life. It is an insult upon the sovereignty of God when the enemy takes the measure of time you need to move, and they are holding it in their custody. Look at the intervention of Joshua. Joshua was fighting the enemy. And all of a sudden, the Bible said Joshua needed more time to deal with the enemy. And Joshua spoke to the son. And he said, son, stand still 
and moon return to the valley of Ijalo. This is the time. At any time, the force of time is stopped. That is when you stop. You are going to lay hands on your head one more time and begin to declare this morning. Every force that is twisting the power of time, any force that is twisting the power of time, I am dealing with you. This is one of the things that makes you shakeable. When a man is walking without the understanding of time, when time is walking against your speed, when time is walking against your movement, the enemy is taking advantage of that and manipulating time. You are going to declare, Lord, every force that is contending with the move of time in my life, let the power of God deal with them this morning. I want us to lift up our voice. And if you are going to live where you are standing, so be it. If you want to move around church, I'm watching the church. If you want to move around, move around. But begin to declare right now that in the name of Jesus, the enemy will not restrict the force by which I move. The enemy will not restrict the force by which I move. I want you to pray it with all your strength. Lord, in the name of Jesus, no forces of darkness can stop the force by which I move. This is what the enemy always wants to do. Somebody that should spend 100 years, they cut it to 40. Somebody that is supposed to spend 10 years in that level, they cut it to 25. Lord, by which force? The force by which I must move into the next level, the enemy will not undo it. The enemy will not take over that force. Open your mouth and declare it. The force of time will not be hijacked. The force of time will not be hijacked. Now, somebody open your mouth and declare, My life will not be running against the time. Say in the name of Jesus, my life will not be running against the time. Do you imagine if Jesus said he will raise up on the third day and he raise up on the fourth day? What is going to be the expressions of our faith? The force of time. It is a force by which you move from one level to another. Oh God, arise. If you want to shout, shout. Everybody open your mouth. Male ele pre etele pranima mazuzekete. At the point where the power of time is taken away, that is when somebody becomes restless. Open your mouth and declare. I'm telling you this morning, if Jesus says he's going to rise on the third day and he rose on the fourth day, it's no longer about resurrection. It's about the time of resurrection. It is no longer about resurrection. It's about the time of the resurrection. There are some things about your life that is about the time. It's about the time. Oh God. Every force. Every force. Open your mouth and declare. Every force that is contending with the force of my time. Every force contending with the force of my time. Arise, oh God. And deal with every spirit that is tormenting the speed of my time. Valia Macontali pra atole ketelia, vale matondi le corata parandi para masontolia. Lord, arise in your power, deal with every expressions of opposition to my timing in life. Le elia palimazoza. God has put faces into your life, God has had measures and faces to your life, God has had levels into your life. At whichever level you should move. And there is a force that hold you down. Oh God, arise and help me. Arise and help me. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Now listen to this. I want you to pray one more time. But I want you to listen to what I want to say. And I want to encourage you to pray. Don't, don't let the devil uh, spoil this moment of prayer. 
uh, with you. If you know you are tired, you stand up on your feet and then you walk around and pray. I'm speaking it one more time. Lateness of life. There is a force that is attached to lateness of life. The spirit that causes lateness is a force that is working against your speed. When you say you came late, have you ever heard the word? And they say, why did you come late? When you say, why did you come late? That simply means you are behind schedule. That is what it means. Many people arrive late. They arrive late, very, very late. You are going to declare every force by which the enemy has designed that I will arrive late. At every schedule of life, I won't be late. Say it one more time. At every schedule of life, I won't be late. If there is a force that the enemy has downloaded into my life, that they said I will always arrive late. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, judge every force by which I arrive late. Judge every force. Open your mouth and declare. And I want you to clap your hands if you can have that privilege. Declare it in the name of Jesus. Malianda palima kuntelegea. Roata palima zuze. Eliama kundalia. Falimele zuze fekuntili akantolia bakuteli haba. Runta plamu zantalia. Lepre elimazuze ketelia. Falimi kundalia paramasuntu. Letia paraba. That in the name of Jesus, the forces of the forces of evil that causes arrival of lateness. Mazanta andia palimazuza. That I will surely arrive, but they say I'm late. That you arrive at the place of interview, and they said you arrive late. There is a force of that. There is a force of life that always wants a man to arrive late. These are the things that causes shaking. These are the things that causes shaking. Oh God, arise, help me in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and declare, it. Lord, help me. There is no force of the enemy through which I will arrive late. I want you to say it right now. Father, begin to correct every error in my foundation. Whatever the enemy has done to me, through which I always arrive late at the schedule of life, at the schedule of time, let those forces be, be disconnected from me. Male ete paruan di katapalia, lende pre ele pra mazuze kete legedia, runta palia mazuze kete, if le me to li karata, rapali mazunzo kontolia, ele me kuria mazunzo, lende pra kotali madia, maranda parando tehia, if le me kunde leke repali mazuze kete lia, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You pray that prayer one more time. Pray that prayer one more time. Pray that prayer one more time. La palia mazuze ketele baliga dualia. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. You can have your seat. The second force, you can have your seat. God bless you. Are we still together? Am I still connected to church? Please let me know if I'm still connected. If I'm still connected to church, please, I, I don't know. If I'm still with the church, please let the media help. Let the media help me to know if I am still connected to the church. I'm still waiting. Thank you. Let me know if I'm connected. I'm still waiting. Thank you. Makabali parabasi teleke debo le pranama sonto le pramo sonto lege oke le pranima sonso le pranima konto debo. Just give me a few minutes. Let them work on it, and then I will be back as well. Okay, thank you. Once you are connected back, please let me know. This is very important. Very important. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Are we back? Thank you. Please let me know if you are if we are back. Wave your hands. That simply means you are with me. If we are connected, wave your hand. Thank you. If we are back, wave your hand. Let me know. 
le parada bali makundi le pra. okay thank you i think we are back now now listen to yeah listen to the second thing you are going to pray you are still going to rise up but not now i'm going to ask you to also pray now don't forget the definition of what i call dynamics when we when we say that uh um uh, uh, the kinola de jo has a dynamic of life i say is a dynamic man is a man that cannot be stopped there is a force by which your life is moving that is what it means there is a force by which you move so the dynamics of living and life simply means there is a force by which this man is moving this man is unstoppable this man is unshakable there is a force by which you move so when the enemy is dealing with a man they are trying to they are trying to look at the forces by which is moving from one level to another it's just like second corinthians chapter 3:17 as we beholding with an unveiled face like in a glass you are transformed into the same image from glory to glory the glory through there is a force through which you move that is the force the enemy deals with to be able to bring you into the shakeable realm so we are going to pray that prayer the second force by which you move or the second force by which a man can stop you it is what we call the force of man the force of man say it one more time the force of man this is a force there is a force called the force of man this is a force that can also hinder the movement of god in a man's life you imagine when joseph began to move there was a force in him it is called the force of potiphar's wife the potiphar's wife look at joseph and he says sleep with me that was not natural that was not ordinary that woman became a force that want to stop the move of Jake, of Joseph when you begin to move you have to open your eyes of understanding and you begin to look by which force does the enemy appoint my traffic by which force does the enemy appoint my stagnation so the force of man is a strong force in the shadow of god if god is going to bring you into the next level if there is a force that is working in you by which you move from one level to another god always involved man as a force satan also involves man as a force so you are going to declare this morning i want us to rise up again that every force that hell has arranged as a man to stop me father i stop them i stop the force of man behind my stagnation I want you to open your mouth and pray that prayer. You imagine if Joseph slept with Potiphar's wife. That simply means she became a stronger force that wanted to stop him. That Joseph moved from Potiphar's wife to prison, it was a process. It was a progress. A lot of people don't can't define the progress of their life. So the progress of Joseph that he left the the the, the house of Potiphar to prison to god is a translation to god is a process so god he was is making he was making headway that woman wanted that man to die inside their house if joseph had slept with potiphar's wife joseph would die unfulfilled in the house of potiphar you are going to declare lord every force of man that hell has attached to my movement I cut them off. I want you to pray that prayer every force of men that the enemy has attached to my movement. Lord take them away. I want you to pray that prayer from the depth of your heart. Le anda prania. If you are serious with me this morning and you are serious with God, clap your hands and begin to pray that prayer. Don't write anything now. I see some people write it. Don't write anything. I want you to take time to pray and open your mouth and declare every force arrangement of men and women as a force that is against the purpose of god let every force of men that the hell has arranged around me lord let them be stopped 
begin to declare it. The Bible says Jericho was tightly shut. Nobody goes out. Nobody comes in. Jericho becomes a force that wanted to stop the move of the children of Israel. The essence why God sank that wall, sank the Jericho, was because Jericho was a path for the children of Israel to move into the promised land. You see, the enemy always wants to stop you at the path. If what you are going through is a path through which you go through, you must pull down, you must walk through the path. You must walk through the path. Begin to declare, I'm walking through this path. I am walking through this path. The forces of men will not hold me down. The force of men will not hold me captive. Can you open your mouth and pray? The force of men won't hold me down. The arrangement of hell through men will not hold me down. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Appointed men, arrangement of men that can stop the move, the movement of God in my life. Lord, stop them. Stop every move of men that is serving as hindrance to my next level. Stop every move of men that is serving as hindrance to my left, left, next level. I want us to pray that prayer. Are we still connected? Okay. Maleke ruba la mazuze. Efli mekundi la parada. Malekandu per antali prani mazuzea. Lefele mekuriam balanzo. In Jesus' precious name we pray. You are going to declare one more time. The Bible says, In Jesus' precious name we pray. I want you to listen to this prayer. You are going to pray it. And I've I feel in my spirit, if you need to move around, move around. <laughs> but you are going to pray. There was a time in the Bible that Peter said to Jesus that you will not, you will not die on the cross. Have you ever read it? When Peter said you will not go to the cross, you will not die. The Bible said, and Jesus said unto Peter, get behind me, Peter. There are people that must get behind you. He says, Satan, get behind me. You are going to declare the arrangement of men will not put a stop to my move. The next move of God in me, no man can stop it. I want you to open your mouth and declare. The next move of God in my life, no man can stop it. The next move of God, no man can stop it. Open your mouth and begin to declare. The next move of God in me, no man can stop it. The next move of God in me, no man can stop that move. Open your mouth and declare it one more time. Le eple mazuse ketelia, e faranda palia, malekendua, elasa palia, elia mazuzun kotolia, makanduli parada, e frani koto, ili karabalia, marantoli para, e rapali makundia, melia kuntali makuntelia, e rapapali makundalia. The move of man will not stop the force of God in me. I'm not hearing you. The move of men will not stop the force of God in me. The gathering of that move, they will not stop the move of men in me. Lord, by your help, by your hand, help me to overcome the forces of men, the arrangement of men to put a stop to me. Lord, help me. Show me mercy in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' precious name we pray. The Bible says there were a man in Jesus' name will pray. There were men, the Bible said there were 40 men who took an oath and they took a vow that we will never sleep nor eat nor drink until we kill Paul. You have read it in the Bible. 40 men, 40. They took oath and then they put themselves in a strong bond that we will not eat nor drink until we kill Paul. And the Bible says, the historian told us, every city and every nation and every town Paul went, those people followed him. To the point that 2 Corinthians chapter 12 said, Paul the apostle began to pray and said three times, the messengers of Satan buffet me, but they say my grace is sufficient for you. He was referring to those men. 
you are going to declare those who have put themselves in, a, in an oath forces of men that has been strongly arranged as a resistance to the move of God in me Lord pull them out of my path whoever is serving that purpose in my life Lord pull them out those who are serving the purpose of stagnation in me Lord pull them out pull them out of my path those who are responsible for the shakings I'm not hearing you those who are responsible for the shakings Lord take them out today those who are responsible for the shakings Lord take them out today in the name of Jesus, le mazeketelia, rapale makundilia, ele mekundi malezuva, alia makunda parande prokotoli gedia, le pranema zunzali ketelia. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. I want to ask you a question today. In Jesus' name, we pray. Now, now open your eyes and look at me. I want us to have a seat. Sit down, sit down, and and listen to what I want to say. Very important. Thank you. You can have your seat. Let's sit. Let's have a seat. Let's have a seat. The Bible says Jacob, when Joseph brought him, when J- Joseph brought his father to pray for his son, the Bible says Jacob crossed his hand and he put his right hand upon Ephraim and his left hand and he put it upon Manasseh. Have you read it in your Bible? In the book of Genesis. The Bible says, And Joseph withstood his father. And he said, My father, this is wrong. He said, This is my firstborn. Manasseh is my firstborn. And Ephraim is my lastborn. Pray for them according to their birthright. But Jacob crossed his hand. And the right hand goes to the second son. The left hand went to the first son. Do you know that in the book of Revelation chapter 14, the Bible called Manasseh half-tribe. The implication of being a half-tribe was an impactation of what Jacob did to those sons. When the hand of Jacob was crossed, it reduces the portion of Manasseh. Why? Because the force that stopped Manasseh was the force of man. No force of man will stop me. Lay hands on your head and begin to pray in the Holy Spirit. No force of man will stop me. 2024, the force of man will not stop me. What God has installed for me, things that God has in mind for me, the force of man, the decision of man will not stop this force, will not stop this move. Can can somebody open his mouth and declare? The decision of God the, the decision of man, rather, will not put a stop to this force. The decision of man. There are men that the decision of men has stopped them. I am not among the people that the gathering and the decisions of men will stop. So, Lord, I rise beyond that decision. Oh, Lord, I rise in your power. Send me help. Blast tongue, pray. Blast tongue, pray. Blast tongue, pray. Blast tongue pray, blast tongue pray, blast tongue pray, blast tongue pray. La Makundia Rapa Leke Ru Le Pre Ele Me Kundiama Landuaske Le Pranima Anto Likeri Le Bre Echeleba. I want to plead with you, I want you to open your mouth and declare. There are people that the decisions of men have stopped them. I am not going to be among such. I will not be among such. I will not be among such. Twenty twenty four. The decisions of men won't stop me. The aggression of men will stop me. The power of men can't stop me. The, the, the persecution of men won't stop me. The decision, the error of men will not stop me. Open your mouth and declare it. No power of hell can put a stop to the expressions of God that is working in me. Men are powerful. Men are powerful. They can become a force that limits your next level. But Lord, in your power, Lord, help me. Le meloza zafra etele krete palima zuzeketelea ef le me kundi liakata parande parama sonsolia. In Jesus' precious name we pray. At any point, in Jesus' name we pray. 
At any point in time, a force becomes stronger than you. It causes a traffic in the movement of life. At any time, a force is stronger than you. It causes a traffic in the movement of time. So the force of man. man a man is a force. A man is a force. Look at what Jacob did to Manasseh. The crossing of hands reduces the portion of Manasseh. When they were allocating land in Israel, the Bible said they gave Manasseh a small portion. Why? And the Bible called them half tribe. The, uh, whatever power that is representing the institution of men that is against your life is coming down today in the name of Jesus Christ. I wanted to say it loud and clear. Lay hands on your head. Say in the name of Jesus, every force of men will not put a stop to the move of God in my life. I am going to the next level. I am remaining unshakable. Men that causes shaking in me, Lord, pull them out of my path. Pull man, men that are causing shaking, the shakings that I'm going through. Every shaking that is institutionalized by man, Lord, take me out. In the name of Jesus, that force must not stop you. Somebody is making decisions somewhere. Somebody is deciding against your speed, deciding against your movement. Decided against your life. Lord, arise in your power. Take this force out of my path. Take this force out of my path. Take this force out of my path. That is the way I wanted to pray. Take this force out of my path. In Jesus' precious name we pray. The, lastly, you are going to pray one more time about the force of man. When Joseph interpreted the dreams of the butler Joseph said unto butler he said remember me when you get to palace it took butler two years to remember Joseph that man was a force that extended the years of Joseph in the prison that is how powerful a man is a man can extend your, the durations of your warfare Man can extend the durations of your battle if something is not done. So in the name of Jesus, I want to agree with you. The force of men will not stop what God wants to do in your life. Say amen. I say the force of men cannot stop what God wants to do. No devil can stop the force of God in your life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I prophesy upon you today that you will rise beyond the gang up of men. You will rise beyond the expectations of people. To those of you that you are watching me today, that men has put you under their limitation, begin to ascend beyond that level. Let the force of God begins to fight for you. Let the force of God begins to deal with every force of man. Malede peelia kundalisa. Lifrata parada balima suselia, malikuria mazunzi efli ketoliza, falia ma kuntali ba korada balia, ebele mezuze keluasa, lianto pranda parundia, maranda pa korata palima zizelia. Let the Lord arise in His power and move you beyond the forces of men, beyond the forces of men, beyond the forces of men, beyond the forces of men. Makanda parada balia. Randi pranosun toliala malekeria. I move beyond the forces of men. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. All right. Uh, as I continue my teaching, um, I want um, um, Sister Dibola to represent a second daughter, your daughter that is in school. I'm talking about your second child. I want you to represent that child. I want to, I'm going to pray for you, uh, for her, through you. God is going to shield her from every appointed evil. And then the force of man will not be stronger against what God wants to do. I wanted to just nail down. Um, I, I had some interruption by the Spirit to pray now. 
And even though I have a message, but I'm going to finish this message. I'm, I'm, I'm praying for um, your, your daughter. I've forgotten her name now. I'm praying, please let the uh, media send the name to me. I'm praying for your daughter that there is no forces of life. There is no forces of men that will stop her from accomplishing that which the Lord has given to her in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm declaring it one more time. And I declare that she is free from every limitation that men are responsible for. The force of men, the force of men will not be able to limit the extent to which she can go she will go further excel beyond level because the lord is not putting a cap on her it is the enemy who wants to limit her but the lord takes that limitation out so i am using you as a point of contact in the name of jesus that the power of god is going to flow from you to her being a mother in the name of Jesus, I declare my Andi Antolia Falika to Parandia Melian Balize Kotelekro Andi Paradosi. I'm praying for Fisayo Le Elekudia Rapalima Elia Fakunta. And I'm speaking to your life that the force of men will not stop you. That you will not be able to point to man as the reason for your limitation. Because God will make you excel beyond the limitations of men in the name of Jesus. It is done. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Okay? You can see that, my thank you. So, now, don't forget what I said. That dynamic is the motion of an object and the force by which the object moves. So I can tell you this morning with all understanding that there is no man or woman or brother or sister that moves from one level to another without a force that moves him. And I'm telling you that in the, on the divine side, the forces that moves us from one level to another, I'm going to show you that there are four forces that moves me from one realm to another and i want to dwell on that four i want to dwell on four forces now oh, let me pray for christian if christian is in church is christian in church is christian in church if she if he's in church fine if he's not in church and then I need to get through him. But if he's in church, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be happy. But if he's not in church, I need to get a message across to him. Very important. So, hallelujah. Please, let pastor let me know if he is in church or is not in church. If he's not in church, I will receive the message and then deliver to him. Okay, let, let me continue if he's not in church. So, there, there, is, there, is, there are forces that moves a man from one level to another. There, there, there are forces that moves a man. Okay, is in church. Okay. Uh, this pastor put anointing oil upon the head of this young man. Yeah, just help me do that on time. Thank you. Put the anointing oil upon his head. Uh, God spoke to me about him that the force of man will not limit you the force of man will not limit you that you will thrive you will go beyond the level that men expect you will go beyond the level that men expect you will go beyond the level that men expect you will, you will shift into dimensions of life that it is only by supernatural force can you attain that place. Therefore, I'm declaring over your life, in the ancestry line that you came out from, 
you will excel in the name of Jesus. And I'm speaking that you will excel beyond the expectations of men by the supernatural force. You will transcend that level and ascend into the level where you begin to thrive beyond the expressions of men and the expectations of people to the glory of God the Father. If you believe that in the name of Jesus, it is done. From today, you will begin to walk in the reality of that which God installed for you and your life begins to go in the direction of this prophecy. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Okay, you can see that. Now, let me, let me show you the forces by which you move from one level to another. The forces by which you move from one level to another. And I want to talk about these four forces and then we are going to pray. I still feel in my spirit that God wants us to really deal with forces of forces that the enemy project in our direction through which life is stagnant. The first force through which you can move, nothing can stop you. Even if men gather together, even if spirit gather together, you will always excel is what I call the force of divine covenant. The force of divine covenant. Is if you're in church, if you're Buluaji, is she in church? Is if you're in church? If she's in church, please let me know. I want to pray. If she's in church, let me know. There is a divine force. I'm having the Holy Spirit is pulling me. Okay. Now, kneel down. And then, now, s s say with your mouth that there is no force in my father's house that can stop me. Can you say that? There is no force on my paternal side that can stop me. I will excel beyond the ancestry lineage. I will excel beyond ancestry lineage. The hand of the Lord is upon me. Say what I'm saying. The hand of the Lord is upon me and I am rescued from my pointed destruction. God is my help. At my appointed time, I will excel beyond ancestry limitation. I will excel beyond ancestry limitation. I may not fully understand today, but I will come into the harvest of this world. I will come into the harvest of what I say at the appointed time. Say it one more time. I will come into the harvest of what I say at the appointed time. I will excel say, by revelation and prophecy. I will exceed limitation. The forces of God will pull me together above every limitation. Can you say it one more time? The forces of God will pull me together above limitation at the appointed time. And I'm praying for you today. I declare upon you that the oil of grace will flow on your head. That there is no gathering of men that will be able to stop what God has in mind. I am projecting you into the future that God has for you. You will not make any mistake. You won't commit blunders that can reduce your chances of fulfilling life in the name of Jesus. It is done in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, now let, let's, let's, let's look at these four forces by which you are unshakable. Four forces by which you are unshakable. Now, let me pray for Juliano Odukoya. The enemy will no longer steal from you, saith the Lord. The enemy will no longer steal from you, saith the Lord. And that which they have stolen shall be restored. Wa alia makundi hite palizo. Fali makuntele. Elia makundalia. Vali ata palimi kantolia. Evele mekundi hakuntali. Valima, I'm moving in the spirit of prophecy. 
say it with your mouth, the enemy will no longer steal from me. The wars of the enemy will no longer steal from me. The causes will no longer steal from me. Every cause, every word that has become a robber of my harvest, word that has become a robber of my time, in the name of Jesus I prevail. The enemy will no longer steal from me. The enemy will no longer steal from me. And that which they have taken away is restored back. I pull the forces of life together. That's the prayer you are praying now. I pull the forces of life together that they begin to walk to my favor. In the name of Jesus. I will not go through destiny disintegration. I will not be tear apart. The enemy won't tear me apart. I want you to declare. God is pulling me together. Life is pulling me together. I will not be torn apart. Life is pulling me together. That's the word. Life is pulling me together. I will not be torn apart. I exceed limits. I accent to the next level. The force of words will not hold me down to this level I am. I accent by greater force, supernatural force, supernatural force. I accent by supernatural means. Just as Jesus got out of the grave, he accented, he rose from the grave. I am rising. From any level called grief, I ascend beyond that rank. Life is pulling me together and I'm ascending beyond limitation. In Jesus' name, amen. I speak by the evidence of the call of God upon my life that the oil of God works begin to speak on you. The force of God is pulled together for the ascending of your level. Begin to ascend into the next level of experience in the name of Jesus. I declare it today that there will be evidence of the release world. God is going to open doors that will take you beyond where you are. Your life is crying for next level and the robbers say you must not move. So power that is shouting you down, I cause those power to dry up. Let the hand of God rescue you in the name of Jesus. Let the hand of God rescue you. Jesus was raised by the glory of the Father. Let the glory of God raise you beyond the level you have in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want you to do more things. Get home and pull this prayer together. Pull the trigger of this prayer and then tell me your experience after the prayer. All right. God bless you. Now, let's go back to where we are. There are four forces that moves you, no matter how strong the enemies are. And that if you are going to become the unshakable life, especially what I'm talking about, don't, don't forget I'm teaching about the unshakable life. The unshakable life. The unshakable life is a life that cannot be threatened by the gathering of the forces of darkness. That life remains steadfast movable, firm and solid there is a life that God wants you to live and that life is what we call the unshakable life just the life God wants you to live, the unshakable life but there, there are forces responsible for unshakable life and the first force is what we call the force of divine covenant the force of divine covenant in the book of Psalm, I think Psalm 74, he said, My covenant will I not break, and everything that has gone out of my leap, I will not alter. He said, My covenant will I not break. If we are talking about the force through which a man will always remain unshakable, we are talking about the force called covenant. This is very very important this is very very important that is one of the things um, that God said if you check Psalm 89 verse 3 Psalm 89 verse 3 said I have made a covenant with my chosen 
I have sworn unto David my servant, Your seed will I establish forever and build up your throne to all generations. God is still committed to the covenant he's made with David. That's why Jesus is going to sit on the throne. That's why Jesus is going to sit on the David's throne. So the divine covenant, it is a force by which you are sent. No matter the gathering of the enemy, you will shift to the next level. The enemy doesn't have that power to keep you out of alignment. The enemy doesn't have the power to keep you out of the alignment. You will always ascend. You will move into the next level of God's agenda. The force of divine covenant will pull you together and it will make you stronger than the enemy. This is what the word of God says. You say he will always, he will always be there for you. So Psalm 89 verse 34 says, My covenant will I not break nor alter the thing that is gone out of my lips. So how do I define covenant? That which has gone out of God's mouth and God has no intention to change it. God does not break the covenant because the covenant is an upholding force. That covenant is an upholding force. The covenant of God always upholds the child of God. So there is a force by which you, you are unshakable. It is called the force of divine covenant. When you see a man that has been through many things in life, but remain unshakable, the force of divine covenant is working in his life. You know, you've been through many things and still you are still standing. The force of divine covenant is working in your life. Somebody said there is a divine covenant. The force of divine covenant is working on my side. There is a side I am I belong. It is the side of the covenant. It is the side of the covenant. It is it 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 is not ordinary for David to kill Goliath. A man was bullying for 40 days and nobody challenged him. When a man of covenant came into the scene, it wasn't a stone that killed Goliath, it was the force of the covenant of God on David that killed him. And I want you to declare. Just lay hands on your head. So the covenant of God is working on me. Stronger than the aggressions of the enemy. So the covenant of God is working in me. Stronger than the aggression of the enemy. The covenant of God is working in me. Stronger than the aggression of the enemy. By the force of this covenant. I will ascend to the next level. I will move to the next level. Nothing is going to stop God's intention for my life. Open your mouth. Nothing is going to stop the intention of God. I'm a covenant child. Can you say that? I'm a covenant child. I am a covenant child. I walk through the valley of shadow of death. I will fear no evil. The covenant of God is a force that keeps me going. As long as what it takes, I will not bend. Neither will I bow. So the arrow of the enemy. God's covenant is working for me. And it is working on me. There are two sides of the covenant of God for you. The covenant is working for you. And the covenant is working on you. I am a different child of God. Covenant is on my side. There is a divine force by which I attain life. And that force is the force of divine covenant. So in the name of Jesus, nothing is going to stop God's intention. No gathering of men, no aggressions of people, no persecution from people can stop the move of God concerning me. I excel in all direction to the glory of God the Father. Somebody shout, the force of covenant makes me unstoppable. I am unstoppable. 2024, nothing is going to stop the intention of God. I will attain. There is an end I'm going. It is called the expected end. Somebody said there is an end. It's an expected end. By the force of divine covenant, I will attain this end. It is not an end of life. It's the fulfillment of life. Somebody say louder, Amen. 
there is a level you get to that your life begins to command true meaning. That is the level covenant is taking you to. Say louder, Amen. I said there is a realm you get to in life that your life begins to command true meaning. That is the level the covenant is taking you to. The covenant of God will always take you to the level where your life begins to produce meaning. That is the level you are going. Of what use is when you dig a well and there is no water. At the scent of water, that is when the digging of well begins to make sense. Some of you in the name of Jesus in the next 13 working days, you will begin to see the force of the covenant of God bringing you to the realm of meaningfulness in the name of Jesus. Your life begins to express meaning to the glory of God the Father. Declare it one more time. The force of covenant is working on my side. In the name of Jesus, no vanity, no shame, no emptiness, no isolation. So the forces of God are working together for my good. Can you say it one more time? The forces of God are working together for my good. No power can tear those forces apart. All things are working together. Somebody say all things are working together. Covenant is working with righteousness. Righteousness is working with prayer. Prayer is working with fasting. Fasting is working with giving. Giving is working with joy. Everything is working together for my good. In the name of Jesus. 2024. There is a working together of the forces of God in me. No power is going to pull those forces apart. Things will begin to work. Can you open your mouth and declare? I will not get to any level in life where things will stop working for my good. Somebody say in the name of Jesus. Hi Reverend Dr. Paul. I won't get to any level in life where things will stop working together for my good. All things are working. All things are working. Say it one more time. All things are working. There is a working together of all things to the glory of God the Father. Working together of all things. Working together of all things. Can you pray one more time? Working together of all things. Working together of all things. That is the, my experience. In Jesus' precious name we'll pray. All right. Now, I wanted to hear this very important. And uh, when I was doing this study, the Holy Spirit said, at any point where things are working together in the life of a child of God is where things begin to get worse. At any point where things stop working together, that is when a man becomes stranded. At any point where all things are working together, that is where a man has issues. But if all things are still working, you are still working. Amen. As if all things are still working, I'm still working. If all things are still working together, I am unstoppable. There is no force that can stop the working together of all things. Because all things will work together. You will come to that realm, what we call the unshakable life. The unshakable life. The unshakable life. In the name of Jesus Christ. So have it in the back of your mind. That the covenant of God is a force that keeps you going. As long as you keep his covenant. Nothing can bend. Nothing can bow your head. The second force that keeps you together. That becomes a force in you. Is the force of righteousness. The force of righteousness. Righteousness is not only a gift of God. The Bible describes righteousness in the book of Ephesians chapter 6 verse 7 verse 10. Righteousness is described as an armor. Righteousness is described as an armor. It is not just a gift. When you are born again, you receive the gift of righteousness. But when you begin to grow up in Christ, righteousness becomes a weapon. What does that mean? This means you must move from calling righteousness a gift. You must wear righteousness as an armor. This is important than before. Joseph remains righteous against all forms of unrighteousness in his own time. There is no dispensation that unrighteous people, unrighteous people will always prevail. No, no. He says, sleep with me. 
Do you understand who a slave is in the Bible? A slave is a man who has a face but not a voice. For the first time, Joseph broke the law of silence. What that means is that when you use your money to buy a slave in the Old Testament, that slave does not have a voice. He has no option, he has no voice, he has no opinion. So when the woman said to Joseph, sleep with me, naturally Joseph had no opinion. He shouldn't have any opinion. He should not be able to say no because he was bought with their money. The husband of Potiphar bought slave. They, when, when, they, when, they, when they bought Joseph, they sold it into Potiphar's house. Is a forever thing. He had no option. He shouldn't have option. But the force of righteousness will not make him to keep quiet. The force of righteousness opened his mouth and he spoke. He said, everything in this house my master has committed into me except you. Why will I, why will I sleep with you and sin against God? For everyone the enemy has conquered. They have taken away their robe of righteousness. This world is becoming very dangerous and believers are losing their robe. Believers are losing the garment of righteousness. People are, people are doing some dangerous things that won't even let God to be on their side. So the force of righteousness is a force that will always move you from one level to another. Do you hear what I've just said? The force of righteousness is a strong force and you must understand this force the force of righteousness don't just shout and say righteousness is um, i have the gift of righteousness move from righteousness as a gift begin to wear righteousness as an armor the bible said put on the old armor of god where will you be able to withstand against the wise of the devil there is a force of righteousness it is a robe it is an armor it is a weapon arm yourself with righteousness only righteous people see the end of the race. Only righteous people see the end of the journey. Unrighteous people will fizzle out on the way because they won't be able to withstand the pressure that is coming from the world. Maintain your stand in righteousness. Declare. Don't practice unrighteousness because the devil knows. The Bible says he that is righteous, he that is unrighteous is of the devil. So there is nothing just saying. I have the gift of righteousness. I'm, I'm, I've been made righteous. I've been made the righteousness of God. It is true. That is a gift. But the lifestyle of righteousness is not a gift. It's a choice. The lifestyle of righteousness is a weapon. When you choose to be righteous, all hell will broke loose against you. But that force of righteousness is a force that will all pull you together to ascend in life. Don't do things that won't let God fight for you. Somebody say, well, God will fight for me whether I do think good things. No, no, no. Don't let God, don't lose the pressure of God. Don't lose the pressure of God. The force of righteousness is a force that you can't joke with because it's one of the first things the devil takes away from people. The devil takes the force of righteousness away. You can't move. Joseph moved with the force of righteousness. See the force of righteousness in Joseph. Because everybody is praying the prayer of Joseph. They don't want the righteousness of Joseph. Joseph moved. The revelation of Joseph came before his temptation. If your temptation comes before your revelation, you will fall. The revelation of Joseph came at the age of 17. He saw moon and sun and star bow to him. His revelation came earlier. Your revelation will come. Say loud that amen. Your revelation must come before your temptation. So, Potiphar's wife came late. Potiphar's wife appeared late. Because by the time the temptation, the sexual temptation came, the revelation has happened. There are some things that will come late in your life. When the devil wants to pull you away, you say, devil, you are late. My revelation came earlier. My revelation came earlier. Somebody shout, my revelation will come earlier. My revelation will come earlier. It will come earlier than your temptation. 
in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every believer that does not understand the revelation of righteousness will fall at any point in time. Righteousness must be shifted from a gift. It must become an ammo. It must become a weapon. It must become a weapon. The Bible talks about the breastplate of righteousness. All the old Roman soldiers in those days, they wear a breastplate. Something they wear so that when somebody throw an arrow, it will not hit them. You must wear righteousness. You must put it on. You must be conscious of righteousness. You must tell yourself, I'm a righteous man. I must not practice unrighteousness. Nobody, the forces that want to stop you will make you do unrighteous things. The forces that want to stop you will firstly subject you to unrighteousness. Every unrighteous move reduces the force inside a man to be able to ascend to the next level. Somebody say in the name of Jesus, the devil is not going to steal that weapon of righteousness in my hand. You must practice righteousness. The third force that will always keep you going irrespective of anything is what I call the force of prayer. The force of prayer. The force of divine communication is a force. That simply means when the Bible says pray without ceasing, the Bible is not joking. When you hear pray without ceasing, it's not a joke. To pray without ceasing, that means you pray at all times. You see, Satan will do all what he could do to convince you that prayer does not work again. At any point you stop praying, that is when the forces of evil is gaining momentum against you. If you pray God has not answered, keep praying. If you pray God has answered, keep praying. If you pray and you don't see any sign of answer, keep praying. The concept of prayer is beyond God answering you. You have to make deposit of prayer into the bank of your destiny. You must let, because there are some things God does with your prayer. He does not just answer our prayer at once. God also bank prayer. He, he makes deposit of those divine communications into your spirit. So that in the day you need the emergency answer, God can draw it out. Believers who do not pray cannot ascend against the force of the enemy. So Satan wants you to believe that prayer is no longer working. You must be very careful of any practice or system that does not tolerate prayers. Any demonic system will have always strive in the absence of prayer. If you have a wife that is not praying, you have to wake her up. If you have a husband that is not praying, you have to wake him up. You have to set up. The force of prayer is a divine force against all forms of the operations and the power of the enemy. This what I am telling you is very important. And everybody must take note of what I am saying. The force of divine communications, you must pray at all times. Because if God has a destiny for you, you remember, you remember I tell you before I left Nigeria, it is a crime to have the weight of destiny without prayer. It is a crime to have solid destiny without prayer. If you have a destiny without prayer, there is no force through which you can manifest that destiny. Destiny itself is wealthy. So if a man does not have a prayer life, he does not have any means through which he can translate destiny into fulfillment. You need to pray. You need to pray beyond just God answering in five minutes. Prayer, answering prayer doesn't bring just a relief. It brings confidence. When God answers your prayer, God wants you to have confidence. <clears throat> God wants you to have confidence. So the force of divine communication with his prayer will always help you. There are forces that is advancing against men. Now let me shock, shock you with one word. If you check the Bible, at the darkest hour, the Bible says, Jesus said unto his disciples, the hour has come, that the prince of the world has come. And then it was a terrible hour that the atmosphere changed. Jesus needed prayer. This was the first time in the Bible that Jesus was gathering prayer for himself. And he looked at his disciples and said, 
pray with me just for an hour. This is the hour of temptation. The hour of temptation means the hour the enemy wants me to change the intention of God for my life. When temptation comes upon a man, it comes to alter that which God has in mind. And you must not let the devil have prevails over you. Now, Jesus was seeking for prayer partners at that moment. But nobody could be available. Their eyes were full of sleep. He came back second time. He came back third time. And when he came back finally, he made an utterance, which I want all of you to listen to me. He said, sleep. Sleep on. Or continue to sleep. And I want to pray for you. You will not get to that point in your prayer life that, that you will hear the voice. Keep sleeping. Keep sleeping. Jesus told his disciples, you guys keep sleeping. Even if you pray now, your prayer has no effect because the hour that I need that prayer, that hour has come. And that hour has gone. I'm praying for you. Prayerlessness is not going to be your life. Prayerlessness is not a life. It's lifelessness. I'm praying the name of Jesus, the hand of God is going to rescue you. The power of the most high will rest upon you. You will not be a prayerless man and woman who has a greater destiny in the name of Jesus. So the force of divine covenant, the force of righteousness, the force of prayer, and the last one is the force of divine wisdom. There is nothing that can stop you when you are operating in these forces. The world is going through terrible times. Somebody said, okay, when you travel to America or you travel to Canada or UK, you will pick money from the ground. Have you seen people that are sleeping homeless here? Have you seen outside people here? People that has no home. People that has nowhere to dwell. People are miserable. People that left their country and people think they are doing fine. They are reckless and homeless and shameless here. They can't go back to their country. You must understand what I'm talking about here. Are you still with me, church? Hallelujah. If you are still with me, say amen. You must understand what I'm saying here. Hallelujah. The force of divine wisdom. The force of divine wisdom. The world is going through serious recession all over the world. God's wisdom is needed in your life because you will always face decision making and you must ask the Lord to help you to make the right decision. Wrong decision is a force that can keep a man from his next level. But right decision is also a force that can take you to the next level. You will not be plunged into darkness in the name of Jesus. Somebody say in the name of Jesus. I will not be plunged into darkness. Darkness is not going to be my portion. God is going to be my light. God is going to send me help to the glory of God the Father. Say in the name of Jesus, I receive the help of God in the name of Jesus. The Lord will send me help and will strengthen me. Many will plunge into darkness because of no light of God's wisdom in them. The wisdom of God helps you to fight against deception, aggression, and depression. Depression increased daily in this side of life. And the presence of the Lord will help us in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The last force that is going to keep you unshakable is what I call the force of good examples. 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 The Bible says you should follow the example of those who through faith and patience inherit the promise. If you don't find example, you will fall. You will not fall in Jesus' name. At any point in time, you must always find an example. You must always find an example. And the grace of God will be sufficient for you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to have this understanding today. That God is doing glorious things in your days. And the enemy can't stop it. The enemy cannot stop the intention of God for your life. God has a plan. Somebody say God has a plan. And the plan of God will work. In the name of Jesus. Are we together? I want us to stand up on our feet.
and we are going to pray four serious prayer. Four serious prayer. Four serious prayer. I have an unshakable life. The covenant of God will not let me be shaken. I say God's covenant won't let me be shaken. God's covenant won't let me shake. No shaking. No shaking. No shaking. No shaking. God's help is on me. God's help is for me to the glory of God the Father. Let's rise up on our feet and let's pray and ask the Lord to send us help and show us mercy and send us strength in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Are we ready for prayer? Let's rise up on our feet. Let's rise up on our feet and pray. I think I've lost the signal in church. Hallelujah. Are we still together? Are we still together? Are we connected? Let me know if we are still connected, church. Let's let me connect, please. Let brothers and let me know. Are we still connected? We are still connected. Please let me know. Let me send me a message. Thank you. If we are still connected together, let let me know. Thank you. All right. We're gonna pray. I'm I'm waiting. Let me receive the signal back. Are we connected? Okay. I need to find out if if we are still if I am still connected to church. Hallelujah. 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 Okay. Stay connected. Thank you. Now, even though I, I, I don't see the church again, I think, but I want us to rise up on our feet and pray. Let's rise up on our feet and pray. When you hear that Jeremiah 29 and said, The thought I think towards you is of peace and not of evil to give you the expected end. You must understand that there is an end that God wants you to attain. That end is not an end of activity. It is rather the fulfillment of all things that God has in mind for you. But you are going to ask God for prayers today that every force that is registered against my next level, by my declaration, I crush them. I crush every expression of any force that is holding me into the same level. You see, there are forces that hold a man to that same level. But Father, by my declaration today, that in the name of Jesus, I defeat the forces that is holding me into the same spot, either spiritually, either financially, either physically. Every gathering of forces that is holding me against the move of God. Lord, in the name of Jesus, destroy the expressions of those forces and give me victory over spirit of stagnation can we pray that prayer lord give me victory over spirit of stagnation today i exercise victory over every force that is holding me 
into the same position. If you check the story of Joseph from the pit to the fortified house to the prison and to the palace, those are the first parts he followed. Every future has a part. Psalm 16 verse 11, you will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. Lord, take me through the path of life without hindrance. Can you pray that prayer? Lord, take me through the path of life without hindrance. Take me through the path of life without hindrance. Take me through the path of life without hindrance. I want to go through the path of life. I don't want to walk like an ignorant man. I want your grace to be sufficient. I want your help to be sufficient. Lord, help me to go through the path of life. There is, there is nobody that, that, that becomes unshakable without going through the path. There is a path God has preordained. Destiny goes through this path. And Lord, I, Reverend Paul, am going through the path of life. And there is no hindrance. No part of life can hinder me. No part of life can help, can, can stop me. No forces of the devil can stop me in the progressive path. In the name of Jesus, I am making headway. God is sending me help. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every help I need. Every help I need. Every help I need. I begin to receive the provision of God's mercy. I begin to receive the provision of God's mercy. What is the mercy of God? They are the provision of every help you need at every phase of life. So this phase I am, Father, release me help. Show me provision. Send me help in the name of Jesus to be able to go through. Psalm 23 says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pasture. He leaves me beside still water. He restores my soul. Lord, restore my soul in the name of Jesus. Help me to go through the path of life by your helping hand. And then get rid of every strange forces that is holding me down. Grant me acceleration. Grant me increase on every side that no force of the enemy can keep me away from the divine manifestation in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I am free from the spirit of stagnation. I am delivered from the manipulations of the enemy. The errors in my father's house will not stop me. Let the force of life be at work in me against ungodly forces to the glory of God the Father. And somebody shout a louder Amen. I want us to rise up as a church and let's lift up our hands. I'm, the Lord laid it in my mind today to declare blessings upon you. Don't forget the song we sang the other time. I need thee every hour, most gracious Lord. I need thee, oh, I need thee. Every hour, I need thee. Oh, bless me now, my Savior. I come today. God is going to give you sufficient strength to go through. When you are going through a process, it is not the attack of the enemy. But if you stop going through a process, then the enemy has attacked you. You must understand that a process is a progressive developmental step by which an end of something is attained. That is what they call a process. You must ask God this morning, Lord, take me through the process. The enemy must not stop you in a corner. Joseph was going through the process. He was making progress, even though physically it doesn't look like the process. But he ended up in the palace. Lord, no force of the enemy will stop the process you are taking me through. In the name of Jesus Christ, I will not be stopped and I will not stop myself. Somebody say, I will not be stopped and I will not stop myself. There is an end that God is bringing me to. It is not the end of life. It is the fulfillment of everything has intended for me. God's purpose will stand. God's power will stand. And in the name of Jesus, no strange forces will hold me down. 
you go through the process of life to attain that end that God has preordained for you. And that is why I sing that song, I need thee every hour. I need thee every hour. There is no hour you don't need him. You need him now than before because you have to move. Somebody say, I must keep moving. You have to keep moving. You have to keep, life must keep going. Life must keep going. At the point you have depression, as the point the life is stopping, at the point you lose control is the time, the time the life is stopping. You must not let anything stop the force of life of God in you. Because that life is bound to, to that life is designed to manifest the fullness of God. So let's sing that song one more time. Why I declare the blessings of God upon your life. I need thee every hour. This is a song that the Lord laid in my heart that I should pray for the church. And I'm doing exactly what the Lord laid in my heart. Yeah. 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 I need thee, oh, I need thee, every hour I need thee, oh, bless me now, my Savior, I come to thee. Somebody shout, I need thee every hour, I need thee every hour, I need thee every hour. Can you sing that song? Yeah. Oh. Temptations lose their power when thou art not. I need thee, oh, I need thee. Every I need thee, oh, bless me now, my Savior. I come to Yeah. I need the every I need the oh I need the every I need the oh me now, my Savior, I come to thee. Somebody shout, I need thee, Lord. Lord, send me help, strengthen me. Need thee every hour. Teach me thy will. I the rich promises in me fulfill. I need thee, oh, I need thee, every I need thee, oh, bless me now, my Savior, I come to thee, yeah, mm -hmm. all right, bless me now, my Savior, I come to thee. All right, we're going to read Psalm 77, verse 19. We are going to read Psalm 77, excuse me, Psalm 77, verse 19. We're going to ask God that God will give you the revelation of the path that God wants you to take. The revelation of the path that God wants you to take. There is a path that your life must follow. And you, must, you mustn't let the enemy dictate this path. This is very important for everyone. Psalm 77 verse 19. Psalm 77 verse 19. You are going to pray it and then we are going to ask the Lord. And if you know any of our brethren whose faith is weak, Let's intercede that the Lord will strengthen them. Psalm 77 verse 19. Are we ready? Your way is in the sea. 
and your path, your way is in the sea, and your path, your way is in the sea, and your path in great waters, and your footsteps are not known. Lord, help me to know your footsteps. 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 God, help me to know your footsteps. This is the prayer God wants us to pray. The Father, I want to know your footsteps. So that when you are speaking to me, I want to hear you. That's Psalm 77 verse 9. You can see Job 28 verse 7. Job 28 verse 7. Job 28 verse 7. Job 28 verse 7. Let's read Job 28 verse 7. There is a path which no fowl knoweth, which the vulture high had not seen. There is a path God wants you to follow. The Bible says that even the fowls does not know that path, and the vulture's eyes have not seen that path. Lord, show me the path of life to follow. That is it. The benefit of knowing God for yourself is also important. Church is not a replacement for you knowing God personally. Lord, year 2024, show me the path to follow. Many people are derailing. People are. There is a mass backsliding in the church, in the body of Christ. People are frustrated. People are tired. People don't know what to do. But there is a path which the fowls does not know. Lord, show me the path. I don't want to play a game with you this year. I want you, Lord, to send me help. Shall we rise up on our feet as I declare that word? Yes. I hope you are blessed today. Let's, let's rise up on our feet as church. I want to put a Father's blessings upon you. But you must understand that there is a force that is working in me that must not, no power of hell can stop me. Le pele mezuze keteleba, lanta pale amazuze kete. Let's take one or two minutes to pray in the Holy Spirit Church. Let's pray in tongues. Le evele me kundi la la baranto setelia, malia to le mazuze ketele hedia, vale meko andi pra, le tu pra ne mazuze ketelia, barande promozonso elekeria bali ma kundali ma sonto legede, evle me kuride, barondo pra ne mazuza. Alia makunte ele prakatapalia ronda palia ma malende ele mekuria mazunzalia. There is a divine force that is working in me. No power can stop the process I'm going through. No power can stop the process I'm going through. No power can stop the process. There is a process I'm going through that the power of hell cannot stop it. The power of hell can stop this process in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Le ele pranima zuzodania, lande kera palima. I am making progress. I am making headway. God is sending me help. God is equipping me for greater things. Somebody say, No power of hell can stop the process that I am going through. Joseph's process did not stop. He was going through it, it didn't stop. There is a release, there is a measure of power that helped him to go through. Lord, help me to go through. Help me to go through. Help me to go through. Open your mouth and declare. If you are sincere with yourself, I want to come to that point that I will have unshakable life. There is a knowing in my spirit that I am going through the right route. So Holy Spirit, help me. Anyone that will not be shakable, it is the one, the force of God is working on your inside so that on the inside you are not subject to every forces and the harassment of hell. Le e peliama la zoze kete le randa paliama zoze kete e le feli me kundi ato li pramoza talima kundi lea malianda bazuze malianda marando malianda parotapa. Somebody pray in the Holy Spirit. The Bible says it will do exceedingly abundantly above what you ask or think according to the power that was in, working in you. There is a measure of God's power working in us. That is the power that won't let you be subject to harassment. The power of God must work in me. The power of God must work in me. The force of divine wisdom. 
the force of righteousness, the force of covenant, the force of prayer, the force of good example. Let the force of God keep me going. Can you open your mouth and declare? Let the force of God keep me going. Let the force of God keep me going. Let the force of God keep me going. Let the force, the righteous force of God will keep me going until my chain comes. You see, Job said, Lord, the days of my appointed time will I wait until my change comes. There is a force that is working in me. The devil can't stop that force. The power of darkness can't stop that force. The manipulations of me can't stop that force. I arise in the power of divine force. I am moving to the next level. I am unshakable. Open your mouth. I am unshakable. There is an unshakable life by divine revelation. I am unshakable. When you look at Joseph, what was going all the, through the mind of Joseph when he was in the prison? I remain unshakable. Faithful is he who has promised and he will do it. And I will hold on to the promise of God. I want you to pray, please. Everybody pray. Everybody is going through one or two things, but I will not be shaken. The force of God is working on my inside. And that force will not subject me to harassment and compromise. God is working in me. The grace of God abounds in me. Open your mouth and declare. I won't let the devil take me away from faith. I won't let the devil take me away from the righteous path. There is a path to follow. The Lord is my shepherd I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pasture. He leads me beside still waters. That is what you are going to pray. Father, lead me beside still water. There is a dimension of life that is calm in the midst of turbulence. Still water is an expression of calmness. Still water is an expression of calmness. Still water is an expression of calmness. He must take you beside this water. He must restore your soul. Somebody say, I won't lose my mind. In this time, I'm not losing my mind. I will not lose my confidence in God. I will not lose my confidence in faith. I will not lose my confidence in God's word. I am not losing my mind. God is there. He will help me to attain the end that he has promised for me. There is an expected end. And until you get there, you will not stop. Until you get there, you will not stop. Somebody say, nothing is going to take me away from an expected end. There is an end God has designed. It is the fulfillment of all things. And until I get there, I will not stop. There is a path I must follow. There is a process I must respond to. In the Mashande Karipa Lima Zaza. Please, everybody, open your mouth and pray. This is the prayer you need in this hour. This is the prayer you need in this hour. Everybody, we, Jesus went through that hour and it came out clean. You are going through that same hour and you must come out clean. Lord, I receive sufficient grace abiding grace in the name of jesus lord help me help me help me to maintain peace help me to maintain sanity help me to maintain my conviction let your grace be sufficient in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Take away from me every element of compromise and shame. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. All right, I'm going to pray with us that the Lord is going to release his strength upon you. Lama Zanza Kandaba. Lana Maronde Paramazuzelia. Le pre etele maro adia malende ele clado basaza. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's just lift up our hands. Yeah. Lama zuze ketele prakataba. Lama ronda parana mazuzele. La prana mazuzolia. Lama konde ale makuria. The Lord will infuse strength into your spirit. The Lord will infuse strength into your spirit. The Lord will infuse strength into your spirit. 
you will come to the realm where you will not be shaken. God will teach you what to do. God will teach you how to respond to the force of life. The enemy is not going to take the force of God away from you. In the name of the Lord Jesus, you will not let down the garment of righteousness. The hand of the Lord will rest upon you today. The Lord will fortify you for good things. You will maintain your faith. You will maintain the confession of your faith. You will maintain the confession of your faith. You will hold to the steadfastness of that path. You will walk in that ancient path. God will keep you as the apple of the eye. He will keep you strong. He will keep you perfect. He will perfect that which concerns you. The Bible says, I have this very one confidence. He will begin a good work. We'll be able to complete it. That you will go through completion of the inner working of God on the inside of you. God will make you a better Christian, a stronger Christian, a righteous Christian, a holy Christian, a productive Christian, a fruitful Christian, that you will maintain the steadfastness of your love towards God. In the name of Jesus, He will keep you together. He will keep you strong. You will not fall by the wayside. Somebody say, I will not fall by the wayside. I therefore proclaim upon you this week that the Lord will give you every help you need. You will walk in the midst of help you need. There is a help that lifts a man. That is the help you will encounter this week. In the name of Jesus, it will keep you strong. And then you will not fall under the administration of the evil one. In the name of Jesus, by the hand of God, God will show you mercy. He will show you help. He will show you strength. He will give you favor that is beyond the level of your confession. He will give you favor beyond your expectation. It will take you through the path and the process to follow. And it will crown you kings in the midst of the enemy. In the name of Jesus, it will crown you king, a king in the midst of the enemy. The goodness of God is upon you. You are wearing the mantle of his goodness. 2024 this week, you will not be found naked. God will show you help. Help that is enough to take you through this level. In every phase that Joseph went through, he received help. At one point in time, Reuben helped him. At one point in time, Butler helped him. At one point in time, different help came from him. In this phase you are now, receive help. In the phase you are now, receive help. God's help has come for you, and you are no more helpless. And everybody say a louder amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want us to have our seat for one minute in announcement. Please let's celebrate our pastor. Thank you for what you are doing. And then secondly, if there are members that are not in church, it is not only the responsibility of pastor. Let's give a call to find out the welfare of our people. Let's call them. Let's invite them. Let's encourage them. So those of them that are weary, let's call them. Let's do visitation. Let's strengthen them. We have one important assignment this season. Strengthen our faith together. That is the essence of church. We are sharing that common, um, common faith. We are strengthening our people. We are encouraging them to remain steadfast in the Lord. And the Lord will keep us all together. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. February 1, it is a new month. February 1 is a new month and then there will be prayer meeting. I will be joining you in prayer meeting in February 1. And then that will be 5 p.m. February 1, 2024. And the month of February, the theme for this month is the glory of God is my reward. The glory of God is my reward reward the glory of god god's glory is my reward that is uh for uh february i know i've lost a signal with the church but just when you get um, that message uh, so february 1 i will be holding a service live service from here with the church the glory of god is my reward that is the theme February 1 is a prayer meeting 
and then I will seek the face of God as regard what he wants that uh, the, the direction of that prayer to go but February 1 the month of February the glory of God is my reward I want us to write it down month of February the glory of God is my reward the glory of God is my reward that is the theme and then we will come and seek the face of God that the best reward you can have is for the glory of God to be your reward. We're going to look at the practical life of a man of God in the Bible and then you will pray yourself. Don't forget that it is a year of sweet and sure reward. And God began to speak to me things that must become our reward. The glory of God is your sweet and sure reward. And then we'll begin to look at the face of this reward called the glory. The face of the reward called the glory. And I want to pray for you. You won't miss the glory of God as your reward. In the name of Jesus. Somebody say the glory of God is my reward. Month of February, the glory of God is my reward. Month of February, the glory of God is my reward. No more delay, no more denial. God is there for us in Jesus' name. All right, uh, let me celebrate Pastor. I want Pastor to come and kneel down and the Lord say I should pray for you. Um, Pastor Yedoku, kneel down. Let me pray with you. Layman, he's been coming. God has been laying it in my mind to pray for you that the Lord will strengthen you by His Spirit in the inner man. And I want you to stretch forth your hand towards your pastor that the Lord will strengthen him for this assignment. Let's ask, stretch forth your hand towards him. Lord, strengthen our pastor for this assignment. Lord, strengthen him for this assignment. Strengthen him for this assignment. Can you open your mouth and declare? Lord, strengthen your servant for this assignment. Put your wisdom in him. Anoint him with fresh oil. Anoint him. When God anoints a man of God, the advantage is extended to the church members. We are not anointed for ourselves. We are anointed for people. We shall lay hands on the sick. They shall recover. So the recovery is they. We are the one who lay hands. You are the one that gets recovered. Ask the Lord to equip him afresh. He's been praying. He's been seeking the face of God. God told me that. And he said, I must put a word in your life. And I pray in the name of Jesus, the hand of God will rest upon you. The Lord will increase his grace upon you. You will not fail. You will not fall. You will not falter. You will take the leadership position of that church into the new level by the grace of God. The grace of God abounds and the grace of God abides with you in the name of Jesus. You will enjoy God's grace. There is a supply of grace that is coming upon you today to the glory of God the Father. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Um, okay. Um, Amen and Amen. I think I will be signing out and then you can do whatever. Somebody say, Reverend, yes, I'm still with the church and I'm ministering from Toronto here. I want you to also remember us in prayer. Pray for us daily for the door of utterance. Pray that God should establish, uh, should make the work of God here rooted and fruitful. And ask, also ask that the Lord will supply our need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Ask uh, God to provide for us so that we will be able to do the work of the ministry here. And then take the gospel around the world. God gave me instruction for the year. And he asked me to travel to four countries. To Mexico, to South Africa. To United States of America and to United Kingdom. 
out of these four countries, our neighbor, our our the country that is very close to us here, is uh, America is close. It's four hours drive from where I am to New York. It's four hours drive. You just drive around, just like Lagos to Benin. And uh, Mexico is also close. It's around the border. But South Africa is 22 hours flight. Why United Kingdom is 9 hours flight. Uh, we need God's resources, um, finances to help us um, do the work. And I'm giving report to the church because it's important you need to know. Um, when we came to this place, we knew that uh, people need God here even more than Africa. There is politeness here. The, the godliness here is low and the Lord will keep us. Well, for the communion, pastor is going to do communion of today. I will be signing out. He is the one that will do communion today. And then he will do it, the communion for the church. But keep us in prayer. Keep us in your prayer that the Lord will provide for our need. It's a missionary work. And then we need God's supply. And if God has also laid it in your heart to send us help, please let me know. I, 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 am, I am asking for church support. Uh, and the Lord will help us. In Jesus' precious name. The Lord keep you strong, perfect in His will. Till the end, no shaking. I have an unshakable life. I live the unshakable life to the glory of God the Father. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. God bless you.